Welcome to Studio 58A Live here at the Jamaica Information Service, our discussion program coming to you live on Facebook. I'm your host, Vaughn Davis. Thank you to everyone joining us online, wherever you are. We really appreciate your eyes. Thank you very much. And like how we have your attention, do us a favor, no man. Share this video with a friend or, or, you know, five million so we can have a very lively discussion. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. We want to have as wide an audience as possible so we can have a whole heap of views um, coming in on this topic. And as you watch, remember to send in your questions and your comments so we can put them to our guests. Now, despite your personal opinion on the topic or your personal feelings, the gaming sector is one of the biggest contributors to Jamaica's economic growth. In Jamaica, the authority charged with ensuring that the sector runs smoothly and lawfully is the Betting, Gaming and Lotteries Commission, or BGLC for short. As its name indicates, it gives oversight for betting, which is like your sports bets, your horse racing, etc. And then you have gaming, which has to do with your games of chance, your poker boxes, that kind of thing, and your lotteries, which I would think are self-explanatory. Now, today we're zeroing in on gaming machines, you know, those boxes that you see in bars and maybe some restaurants and gaming lounges, etc. You see, to operate them, persons must have a license. We're here to talk about those licenses, and our guests today are Director of Licensing and Registration, Maurice Thompson, and Manager for Corporate Affairs and Communication, Jeanette Lewis, both, of course, from the Betting, Gaming, and Lotteries Commission. Welcome to both of you guys. Can you hear me? I just need to unmute. Good morning. Good afternoon. Welcome. Um, thanks for having us, Vaughn. Bon. Right. Great, Janet. Great. Uh, Maurice, are you hearing me as well? It seems like you're still I mean, I'm, I'm hearing you. Good afternoon, um, viewers and listeners, and thank you for having us, Vaughn. All right. So to begin with, our interview today is pretty timely because it's right about the time for persons to be making steps to renew their gaming machines license. So let's dive right into that. So Jeanette, Maurice, which one of you should I throw that one so we can persons can appreciate what they need to be doing at this time to ensure that their gaming machines are licensed and, you know, in order? All right, so I'll take that, um, Vaughn. All right, great. Um, Go ahead. So all gaming machine license and premises that houses gaming machine, the license expires on March 31st of each year and must be licensed um, before April 1 um, each year. So as you indicated, today is the 11th of March. Um, the the relicensing period has been opened um, since the start of the month. The, the licensing process is twofold. Um, persons, and these are for persons who have been licensed last year and are renewing their license. It's twofold. Um, you, pay, you pay at the tax office the government amount, and you pay to the BGLC the BGLC amount. It's 5,000 each way. Um, and then you, you, come, you take the completed application to the commission for your, 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 your license to be processed, your renewal to be processed. So, um, persons, saying so persons need to be getting themselves in, or I would like to believe they would have already started to get themselves in order so that they can proceed and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do right about now, right, Maurice? Well, we have persons, some licensees have already started their licensing process. We are, we are currently now processing persons for relicensing. Um, this, this drive is just to encourage more persons to get on board and get their license, um, get the process started as quickly as possible. All right. So for those who may, let's just assume that some people may not necessarily be familiar. Can you just go through the process and so that persons can understand what they're supposed to do? Let's say they, after the whole year, maybe they forgot, maybe they weren't paying attention. You know, what should they need to be doing at this time? All right. So, so, they, so, they, so they need to complete the application. After completing the application, they go to um, the TAJ. The cost is $5,000 for each local machine at, at TAJ. Um, and two thousand five hundred dollars for each premises at TAJ. Having paid the money at TAJ, um, they need to pay the commission's um, portion of the money. Still five thousand dollars per machine and a thousand dollars for the premises. This money can either be paid at through the BLG, BGLC account online, or it can be paid for the first time Vaughn through Bill Express. Any one of Bill Express outlets. Um, and I, and I think most of our customers would appreciate the fact that with the crowding and the restrictions and so on, this represents an a, a, a easier way for them to pay the BGLC amount. Right. So that, that, that is the process of persons who want to renew their license. 
All right, so just to be clear, he mentioned TAJ, that's the Tax Administration. Tax Administration in Jamaica. Inland Revenue yes. Office. This is Inland right. Revenue. Okay. What person is called Tax Office. Right, so that's where you normally go and make the payments. And make so payment on. for the government portion. Right, so to the, the uh, naturally we'd have to complete an application form. Did you mention that, where persons can get the form? That application form is available online. They can download the application form. It's noted, um, renewal up gaming machine, um, licensing gaming machine. They can, th those forms are available online. All right, and I would definitely encourage persons to take advantage of that. This is the time of COVID. So, you know, if you don't necessarily have to go and get a license physically, download it, fill it out, and uh, that would make your life much, much easier. And you can make the payments um you'd have um to the tax you'd have to physically go to the tax office to make the payments this is part you have of to it physically go to the tax office to make it um, unfortunately um but uh, um the good thing that you don't have to come to the commission to pay the commission amount or go to the bank to pay the commission amount um in the line you can pay the, the, the commission amount either online through um or a scotia account or through any other um probably approximately 300 or 400 bill express um locations island wide which is the first we're doing that facility is available to our licensee for the first time this year all right fantastic and you can also pay bill express online right so that that so you don't you don't have to come to bglc to make a payment or submit your application all right so jeanette talk to me now let's talk to the persons out there um what, um, you know, as we said, they should be making this, taking the steps to get their machines and looking through and making sure that their machines are ready. I mean, well, not so much ready, but making sure that they are taking the right actions to make sure that they can renew them without any hassle, without anything. Talk to me about some of the challenges they might face if they, if they end up going over the time, going over the, 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 the deadline or they find out that the time has passed for them to renew their, renew their licenses. Well, the first thing that happens immediately, um, if you if you start the process after April one, is that the the portion of the fees that are paid to the government through TAJ start accumulating penalties, mm. and as each quarter passes, that penalty amount increases. So the longer you take to regularize your license. The, those penalties automatically accrue. Um, if you um, don't have your license renewed promptly, you risk being um, you risk having your machines being identified as being unlicensed and therefore could be subject to more strict um, action, which could include. Uh, payment of fines and also seizure of the machines. And, and the fact of the matter is that you have to be determined by law to be what we call fit and proper to operate in the gaming industry in Jamaica. Mm. And if you allow your license to lapse, that can impact your fit and proper status. So when you try to do any future licensing in this industry, that might be compromised. All right. So if you plan to expand and do a little bit more of things, eh, that you might run into some roadblocks when you don't, uh, if you don't follow the process and make sure you say get everything done on time. Exactly. If if because you would have you would have um, stepped on the other side of the law, and that of course become puts you in in dangerous waters. All right. So let me just remind everybody what we're talking about here. We're talking about the process to renew the licenses for the gaming machines. You know those boxes that you're going to see in, in bars, if you, you know, some restaurants all over the place, different lounges and so on. All of those machines, they are, they have a license. The person has to have a license to operate them. And now is about the time when those persons should be looking to renew those licenses. As Jeanette mentioned before, the license expire on March 31. This is every year, correct? Yes, absolutely. Right. Expire on the third. So, I mean, all of you out there, you might know somebody who knows somebody who goes to one of these establishments or somebody who might, who likes to use them. So it's important to let those persons know that they should be, um, because I think that they should also play a part in ensuring that they are using licensed machines. Because they, they can run into challenges if you decide to use a machine that's unlicensed. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. But I just want persons on, um watching us on, uh, you know, online to know that you have a role to play in ensuring that you use a licensed machine as well. 
um, what should persons look for? If I'm a person, I walk into a bar, I walk into an establishment, I see a gaming machine and I think I want to go and take my chances on it. What should I look for to ensure that I know that this machine is, you know, up to scratch, up to date, and I won't run into any problems if I use it and, you know, win a big jackpot and then realize <laughs> you know, the license is, is expired or something like that. Talk to me. What, what should I look for as a customer? All right. So, so Vaughn, um, I want to go back to um, so expand on what something that Jeanette said about the, the fit and proper. Mm. It's critical. So if you're entering the gaming industry for the first time, you'll undergo what we call a due diligence investigation, which is an investigation into your Oh, Maurice, Maurice, you went muted there for a second. So I'm going to have to ask him to. Ah, there you go. Okay, so I was want to go back over something that Jeanette, that I think it's very important that um, our listeners and our viewers um, need to hear. Um, before you enter the gaming industry, you must undergo what we call a, a due diligence investigation that's, that looks into your, your criminal background, your financial background, and your character. Mm. If you fail this due diligence investigation, meaning that um, when the commission um, concludes the investigation, you, you are not deemed eligible, you will not be allowed to get a license. Mm. As a licensee, you run the risk of losing your fit and proper if you are if you are if you are caught operating on licensed machines. Okay. And if you are caught a li uh, and, that, and as, as Jeanette alluded to, and I consider it critical, if that happens, then you will not be allowed to sell lottery. You're not allowed to sell horse racing, legally that is. So it's, it's important for persons who are licensed to understand that they can lose their, 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 their ability to be licensed by the commission going forward if they find themselves in such a situation. I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that you talk about this because, I mean, I, I also personally, just look, in looking at... Um, the whole gaming situation, it naturally seems like your customers, the customers to these establishments are some of your best assets in terms of policing the different facilities, establishments, yes. and so on to ensure that they are kept. Because, I mean, the last thing you'd want to happen is that you go there and spend your money and you participate in one of these things and then you find out that there's a problem. Yes. You know what I mean? So um, is there... A, um, what are some of the challenges? Let me just go here first. What are some of the challenges a customer may face if they use an unlicensed machine? What are All some right. of the pitfalls of that? All right, so I'm going to come to that. So I'm going to speak to first a customer now what they should look for. Sure. Um, so I spoke to the premises license and the machine license. Each premises has a, on the conditions of license, has to, the license needs to be displayed in the premises. So that's the first thing they can, they, 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 they should look for. Each, we call them a prescribed premises, a license issued, is issued for the premises that must be displayed to the public. So that's one. Two, each machine that, are, that is licensed by the commission, a disc is issued for, for that machine, and it has to be placed in a prominent position on the machine, on each machine. So those, those two indicators persons should look for, and this disc is about a quarter the size of your um. Your, your car, your car disc, and it has the, the, the date indicating, the, meaning the financial year that the machine, the, the license is valid for on the disc. Right. So that's, yeah. so what, what the customer risk in not, in not playing um, at license location, one, if you go to a license location and as you say, win a jackpot and there's, there's a problem in getting the payment, the commission can't help you. Yeah. So you're you're basically on your own if and when that happens. If you however go to a licensed location, the commission will intervene and investigate. And if everything works out right, you will we will demand that the mandate that the licensee provide that that that, that the winnings to you, which we have done in the past. All right, that sounds good. That sounds like uh, that's definitely an incentive for me to stop and look and pay attention and make the machine I'm using is up to scratch and up to date. So, I mean, people out there, if you use a gaming machine, if you are a person who likes to go to gaming lounge and use a machine, it's in your best interest to look and make sure that one, the machine is licensed and up to date so that if you win some money or win something and, you know, the, God, you don't want some, put it, put it this way, you don't want something to happen. Then when you check it out, the machine or, or other things were not in order and then you don't have any recourse. That's the worst feeling in the world. I'm sure that. I'm sure nobody wants that. You don't want to spend your hard-earned money on the situation, looking for a payday, and then when it happens, they find out that, oh, 
is that issue now and then you know i have to go to jump through all different kind of hoops to make this thing happen or work out for you you know what i mean that can take however long and nobody wants that so just do yourself a favor check it out first make sure that it's licensed and it's up to date and then proceed afterwards i'm yes. sure the bgs would appreciate your help in that regard as a matter of fact Vaughan, we encourage customers if they if they if they don't see the license displayed they should ask the operators for the bglc um premises license and ask for this for the machines and if they want confirmation they can call the commission um visit our um, website, Jeanette, I think we still we put the licenses now up on a quarterly basis on our site. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, the persons, the persons can, um, can check. So, I mean, I just ask that they call because um, it, it might be that the license is being processed um, that, and we are not come to the end of a quarter. So if they want verification, they can always call the commission for verification. All right. So you can, there's a facility. So there's also a facility you can check to make sure that the place you're going is licensed and registered. Definitely. Fantastic. Definitely. So there's value for money so in it. You know, think about it that way. Go ahead, Janet. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so we actually put a list online, and we're actually updating the website with the latest version of the list as we speak. Uh, so we do have a list of licensed gaming operators online for all the categories. So, um, if somebody is going to a venue in Clarendon and they want to jump on their phone and go on our website and check the list to see if um, that place in Clarendon is licensed to have gaming machines, they can do that. All right. So in terms of the licensing um, exercise itself, and how, how many, can you give us a snapshot of, of how, are, how this gaming industry is doing? How many uh, machines are we talking about here in, in Jamaica at this time? Um, last year, we licensed um, about 14,000 um, gaming machines, um, which is probably um, over the last five years, about a 200% or 300% growth in terms of that sector of the market. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to speak about, we had an amnesty in 2017, Jeanette? 2018. 2018, 2018. where we, yeah, we asked persons who had unlicensed machines to come in, license, having, if you fail, if you pass, if you turn proper, we won't ask you any questions in terms of where you got the machines from. We just license the machines. And that caused a groundswell in terms of the number of machines we have. Um, and so we have seen a significant growth um, in that sector of, the, in sector of the market. All right, so let me stick a pin in that in terms of growing that particular segment. Talk to me, both of you, about um, getting into, let's say, for example, I'm a person, I decide, you know what, I think I would like to go into gaming machines. I'd like to put them up in a particular establishment. Is it easy for me to do this? What, you know, what is the process like for me to begin this process so I can get into this industry? Easy like one, two, three, Vaughn. Um, I mean, as I spoke to, I spoke to the due diligence before, that's a prerequisite. Um, we can't accept an application from you without the due diligence being completed. Um, that would probably take about four to five weeks because it's a, it's a, it's a kind of intensive check um, because they, one of the mandates of the commission is we want to ensure, or we, we, we ensure that money laundering is not is not undertaken in, in the in the industry. So we, we ensure that persons who enter the industry are free from any criminal involvement. So your source of funds in terms of where you're getting your money from to start the business is integral, important to us. Having cleared that hurdle, um, if you want to go into the gaming machine uh, market, the commission has a list of what we call technical service providers. These are persons licensed to make, to manufacture local machines in Jamaica. You're only allowed to purchase machines from these persons. If you purchase machines and a list of these persons are, is on the commission website, and you can call the commission um, for, if you want, the, the numbers or names of these um, companies. If you purchase the machines from a company or an individual who is not on this list, these machines will not be licensed or cannot be licensed by the commission. Right, so it's, easy. it's really so easy. Like, I just need to do the application, and then once I pass that process, I can but go to one, the, two, three. It's so one, two, three. Uh, it's easy after that. The person that controls so the premises that the machine is placed on also needs to do a due diligence. Um, because that also represents an area where money laundering can take place between the operator and the premises operator. So, we also will close that gap where the premises operator also needs to do a due diligence. So when the premises operator and the machine operator does the due diligence and the machine is bought from a licensed technical service provider, then the machine can be licensed. 
As you mentioned, as Janet had mentioned, that persons can um, go on BGLC's website and get information about the different areas that are licensed or the different establishments rather that are licensed. Can you share with us the contact details for the BGLC so persons can know? It's always good to let them know exactly where to go in case they want to search this information and get some answers. Well, there are a number of ways to get answers from the Messi Gaming and Launches Commission. We're on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And we also have a YouTube channel. Our website is www.bglc.gov.jm. So we're online on our website. Um, you can email us at info at bglc.gov.jm. And we have a WhatsApp number, which is 876-224-2452. So you can WhatsApp us, which a lot of people prefer to do because it's quick and it's at your fingertips. And we certainly will respond to a WhatsApp message within one business day, if not less. Mm -hmm. And then you can always telephone us at 876-630-1353. So there are a number of ways that you can reach out to us for information. All right, a uh, quick question here coming in online from Shana K. Tresan Salmon. Thank you, Shana K. Appreciate your question. She's asking, how many licensed technical service providers are there? Um, as at last year, we had 16 te licensed technical service providers spread all across the 14 parishes. Uh, 14, you said? Yes, 16. 16 across 14 parishes. As 14 parishes. So yeah, you make it accessible for persons all over the country to be able to get them. So is it that we make them here or is it more of like a situation where we bring them in? No, the, um, what we have, we had, a, we had a vibrant market of persons buying the, the parts and assembling them in Jamaica. What we does is provided an avenue for persons to do that in a legitimate legal manner where we can track the buying of the parts, the making of the machines and then the, 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 the end product now being placed on the, in the market. Yeah, it sounds great to me. We're creating jobs and creating opportunities for people. So I think that's great. So, you know what I mean? Keeping keep it our mantra and our, our mission. Kudos to you. We should definitely load that up some more. You know what I mean? Technical service providers doing, I mean, because I'm sure many persons who come in, they probably just think the machines just, you know, people bring them in from fire and whatever the case may be. So, I mean, it's good, it's good to know that there's a Jamaican connection associated with it. Well, you have the slot machines, which you find typically in the gaming lounges, which are the larger establishments that have these banks of machines with all these lots of pretty colors, you know, like what you see in a Vegas situation. Mm -hmm. But the local equivalent is what we call those locally manufactured machines or what people might fondly refer to as poker boxes. Mm -hmm. So, all right. What I'm going to do now is as, so we can switch back to a few more areas of the BGLC's operations. I want to go back over the process itself for applying or renewing a gaming machine license. All right. So, Maurice, I'm going to take, I'll let you take this. Persons should renew their, give us the dates and then the process itself for renewing a gaming machine. Persons, license. Well, persons can start renewing the license as right now as we speak. We're now, our team is now processing licenses for the 2021 2022 season as we speak. So one, you download your form, your application form um, from the from the BGLC website. You complete the site, you complete the form, you pay the the the, the TJ um, amount um, at the TJ, at the tax administration in Jamaica. You pay the BGLC amount um, either through the Scotia BGLC Scotia account online, or you can now pay it for the first time available Bill Express, which is online or in face. Um, having having completed the application and having your receipt, they, you, you put them together in a package and drop them off at the commission, and your and your, your relicensing will be facilitated. Because until I think I didn't say this before, but I, I'm saying it now. Um, and from now until the twenty second of March, we won't be taking any face to face customers. Okay. Um, so the the mode of the mode of accepting. The applications are either by Dropbox or you can use a courier um, to, to, to drop the drop off the drop off your packages. All right, so definitely take advantage of um, take advantage of that. This is COVID time, as you, as Maurice is alluding to. So we need to keep ourselves safe and do the safest yes. possible way. So you know, use the Dropbox, use the courier, whatever you need to do. But most importantly, just make sure that your machines are licensed. 
Yes. Because as we said before, you could run into a whole heap of problems if you, problems. you, know, you know, you don't want that. You don't want, you know, you know come off of the fit and proper list and then you try to expand your business and so on. And then you can't do it because it's something as simple as you never just, you just never renew your license. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention, as they both just mentioned, you have your fines and you have your penalties and all of that. And I mean, come on, nobody wants that either. So do yourself a favor. Get yourself in good standing and just make sure your boxes are regularized. All right. And Vaughn, just backing up what you're saying, the, the, the cost of a local machine is running away from about 400 to 500,000. You would not want to lose a 500,000 asset, $500 asset for $10,000 for a $10,000 fee. Yeah. That, 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 that don't it, it, it doesn't, it, does, it, it doesn't, no, the mathematically doesn't just work out. <laughs> That's too much of a big, in, too big of an investment to lose over, over $10,000. So I'm like, come on. Yes, yeah. for $10,000. It's just $10,000 a license machine for a year. Um, so <laughs> to lose your 500,000 asset for $10,000 is, and, and then lose your fit and proper status on top of that. Yeah, you don't want to do it. And our pay up to sixty percent penalty on the on the TAJ portion. It's just the, the 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 cost is just too great. Exactly. All right. Uh, two quick questions before we move on to another thing. So, for example, if you know, I for whatever reason I woke up on April two and realized, oh my God, I didn't you know renew my license. Is there? Can I make an appeal to say, okay, you know, my bad, I forgot. Can you delay coming to you know take away my machine or strip me of my thing? If there, can I? go through some kind of way to negotiate, you know, to arrange that I can get this thing done in the soonest possible time without necessarily facing the worst possible consequences. Because, you know, there might be just persons who are last minute. This is, you know, this is the way things happen a lot of the time. Can we just, is there a little, I don't know the word, the word escapes me right now. Is there a little... Leniency? Leniency, that's the word I was like, the word just wouldn't come, in, come to my mind. Yes, that's the word I was like. I, I think what we want to do, you know, Vaughn, um, is encourage everybody as soon as you realize that your, your license has not been renewed is to get the application in, get the payment to, to THA, get your application in. It does take a few weeks to process the application uh, to renew the license, but you know, the thing is intent and your actions show your intent to be in good standing. Mm -hmm. So while we can't say that we can allow for any leniency or that we can facilitate any leniency, especially when it comes to the TAJA portion, because mm -hmm. that is automatic. Right. Um, we certainly, um, the, the relationship between the licensing and the enforcement um, divisions is so collaborative that you know they are aware of which licensees have applications pending so you know enforcement action won't necessarily be taken against them at that particular point in time but of course the longer you go beyond the april one date to renew your license the greater at risk you are of being subject to some kind of enforcement action all right so you hear that people do yourself a favor i mean you know Get it, submit your license, submit your renewal application rather as soon as possible. You know what I mean? But, you know, if you keep, if you forget, do it as soon as possible anyway. The sooner yeah. you make contact, the better you are, the better position you'll be in. All right. Another, another question. What are the ongoing, is, are there any ongoing obligations of gaming machine operators once you have your, once your license is approved? Is there, is there anything that you need to keep in mind beyond, of course, you know, making sure that you are up to date with the following years or the coming years renewal? Is there anything that's required of you as a machine, gaming machine owner slash operator as the throughout the licensing period itself? So one, so one of the things you need to ensure that the, the, the premises that the machines are on, um, they are, the license is issued at a number of conditions um, for both the machines and the premises. Um, so you can transfer or move the machines without the commission's knowledge. You can add new machines to the premises without this. So all of those are a breach that could impact your, your fit and proper status. So the, our compliance team goes out in the field um, as soon as the license are issued to ensure the conditions under which the license are issued to, uh, are issued under, are complied with. You just mentioned something a while ago. Is there a particular kind of environment? Do you have rules and regulations in terms of the environment in which um, persons can place the boxes themselves? Because you mentioned that you can't you can't just add a new one, and you have to, you can't necessarily just move it without the, the BGLC's knowledge or authorization. So, do you have any um, 
requirements for the kind of area in which a person can, you know, mount the machine. And, and All right. So, so, one, one, what, so one of the things that we do, Vaughn, is sort of a new premises, um, when we do the inspection, we ensure that, so for example, the premises only can hold five machines. We won't give perm permission for seven or eight machines to be in there because we're mindful of the, the physical space within, within a, a premises. Um, so we ensure that in terms of the, the, co the, the comfort of our customers, um, the, 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 the punters are ensured. So that is what part of our inspection process um, mm -hmm. ensure that. Um, so you have a small place um, that only can hold three machines. Ten machines is not going to be, be stuffed in there because a lot of money can be made. And also, is 19 is, a, 19 is the highest number of machines you can have on any one premises. Mm. So you can't have more than 19 of these local machines on any one premises. And uh, we spoke also about the three parishes, Trelawney, St. James, and Hanover, that are in the exclusive geographic area. No new license can be granted for any place to have more than five machines in these premises. So we have to be mindful of all these um, um, various laws based on the geographic area of the, pla of, the of the places. Right. So it's not necessarily like they can go and say, no, that place is... I mean, you are mindful of the space itself, but more so in terms of the you know, practical, practically. The practi the pra yeah. Yes, because first will come to you and say, yeah, man, you can't hold 10 in and when we go, we say, no, sir, it, it can't hold 10. <laughs> it at all, yeah, right. Yeah, I can, I can see that happening because somebody might want to squeeze as many machines as, as many as possible. Yes, and so on. Um, Kay Thompson, who uh, she's asking a question, what are some of the penalties for late renewal? It's always great to just refresh that. Um, Janet, I'm gonna let you take this one. What are some of the late, what are some of the penalties for late renewal of your, um, of your license? I think Mr. Thompson is better placed to take that one, to be honest with you. All right, so, so, <laughs> so payment made after April 1 and before July 1st, it's a 15% penalty. Mm. So before April 1 and, sorry, after April 1 and before July 1, 15%. July 1, but before October 1st, 30%. October 1st to April 1 of the following year, 45%. And 60% from, you didn't pay any at all last year. You're going to pay a 60% um, um, the, the next year on the machines when you come back. Oh, my. My goodness. I don't think I, I'd rather avoid that. Do yourself a favor. Yes. That is, yeah. and, and as we said before, Kay, if you, are, if you weren't um, here or paying attention, you can lose your fit and proper status. As Maurice had mentioned, before anybody's granted a license to operate or establish or mount these gaming machines, they have to be assessed. And they're, you know, they, they go back there and uh, assess your character, assess your background, or background check and make sure that you're uh, a law-abiding citizen in good overall standing. Well, if you don't, if you don't renew your license, re if you don't renew your, renew your licenses on time and make sure that everything is up to date, you stand the chance of losing that. And losing that means you might not be able to expand your business or do other things in the gaming industry. And you don't want that. You want to be in a position to do best, to make as much money and do as much as you want. So do yourself a favor and just make sure, say, Anybody who you know, if you run some machines or you know anybody who has machines or, you know what I mean? Just make sure that, you know, everything is up to date and up to scratch. You know what I'm saying? And once again, um, I'm sure the BGLC would appreciate the public's participation in ensuring that the machines themselves are up to date. So if you go into a machine, if you go into an establishment rather than you see a machine, you can look around and check to see that the license disc is there. One, it should be there, right, Maurice? There should be a should license. Should be there. Should be license disc, and the license should be displayed for the premises. Should be displayed in a conspicuous position within the location. Right. And if I you don't see it, ask for it. Exactly. And if you don't see it, ask for it, and then look at it and make sure that it is up to date. Because yes. you know what I mean. Next thing you know, you're going to use the machine, as we said. Or you might have an issue with the, with, with the premises owner, some kind of issue. Maybe you can't get a payout, something like that. But the BGC can't, BGLC can't help you because you're using an unlicensed machine. So the customer support is appreciated in ensuring that the machines you use are up to date. And he said there are what, 10, to, how much he said, Maurice? 14,000 machines? 14,000 machines, licensed machines last year. That's about 14,000. That means they're all over the country. So it's, all you know, over the country. And you are the customers are the ones who interact with it most. They are the ones who are going to touch it, use it, and so on. So it's in your best interest to just take a one look, take a one trip, as we say in Jamaica, and make sure that the machine is up to date. All and right? Vaughn, one, one thing I want pr pr um, punters, persons who play games to know, one of the mandates of the commission is to protect the interests of the persons who participate in gambling. Mm -hmm. It's one of our foremost mandates. But we can't 
execute that mandate if, it, if, you're not, if you don't gamble at licensed locations. And we want to protect all persons who gamble. All right. Another question from Kay Thompson. Thank you, Kay, for your questions. Really appreciate that. Thank you for all your questions. She's saying, can you say which parish has the most licensed gaming machines? Kingston and St. Andrew. Kingston and St. Andrew. I'm surprised. I thought it would have been Montego Bay or, you know, one of the more touristy type areas. No, Kingston and St. Andrew. Um, I mean, it's as, it's as a large, it's as probably half of the population, so it goes without saying. It's the largest economic activity. Right. Um, I mean, so I guess it goes without saying. All right, guys. So great. So persons, if you want to get more information about licensing your gaming machine or re, you know, renewing your license for your gaming machine, you can always check out bglc.gov.jm. And uh, you can also call them at 876-630-1353. Get more, get that and other related information, which gives me a great opportunity, Jeanette, to switch back and talk about gaming itself and how the BGLC works. Um, BGLC is working to overcome the, you know, because when it comes to gaming, this is Jamaica, we have the most churches per square mile. So naturally, you will have many persons who don't necessarily support gaming or gambling itself. And mm -hmm. the question I was like, I want to ask you is how do you respond to those, um, those criticisms or to those persons who would have that kind of objection to throw at the work, at the gaming industry? And I suppose you, because you as, a regular, you as the regulatory oversight providers for the sector. Well, you know, gambling is an adult activity that adults are supposed to be able to make the choice for themselves to participate in. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody, you know, for everything that is available out there for some consumer to participate in, there is a pro and there is a con. Absolutely. As a regulator for the gaming industry, we recognize that gambling is going to happen with or without regulation. Gambling has been one of those um activities that has been around since before man was conscious of himself, right? Um, but the fact of the matter is that um, it's going to happen whether or not there are laws and regulations governing gambling. So as a regulator, our role is to provide a disciplined and structured framework within which gambling can operate legitimately so that the operators, can offer a service to consumers and that consumers can be confident that they will not be taken advantage of by unscrupulous operators. Mm -hmm. We also have an important role to play to protect vulnerable populations or vulnerable members of our populations from the potential harms that gambling may cause. And this is another aspect of our role as the regulator. So we work to, to educate the communities about the ills and, of, and prevention of underage gambling. And we also do a lot of work about ensuring that illegal gambling is minimized or, or eliminated where we find it happening. And we also ensure through our responsible gaming program that we execute through Rise Life Management Services, we also ensure that persons who choose to gamble do so responsibly. So, you know, we have our responsible gaming program where we, through Rise, uh, educate the public on tips to manage your gambling participation, as well as to offer services and facilities to help people cope with the uh, any problems or addictions that they have with gambling. Um, as an example, tomorrow we're doing a webinar for gaming lounges, for the employees in the gaming lounges, because one of the conditions of license is that all employees in a gaming lounge must have training in responsible gaming. So we're having one of those mandatory gaming um, responsible gaming education sessions tomorrow as a webinar, and we already have 100, over 130 employees from different gaming lounges across the island that have registered to participate. So we're not just licensing operators, we are also making sure that gambling, we, we, we do things to minimize the potential harms of gambling on the society. All right. In Jamaica, one of the things that we unfortunately find happening is that um, 
children are often used or sometimes an adult says you know why go buy a number for me there you know what i mean or something like that or you go buy go get a number from the cash pot or go you know, go buy a lotto ticket for me and come back you know what i mean we do it very offhanded without realizing that this is a very serious offense this is under and, and we need to be more aware of this in this country so talk to me about the efforts of the bglc to to help curb underage gaming or underage gambling and that kind of thing well, first of all, the law prohibits anybody from 18, anybody 18, under 18 from participating in gambling. And the law has uh, consequences for operators who enable or permit anyone under the age of 18 from participating in gambling. So um, a parent who innocently sends a child to go and purchase their lottery ticket, um, really is, is doing an injustice to the child. But when that child goes to the, um, to the lottery agent to purchase that ticket, the lottery agent will not sell the ticket because that will cause a loss of their license uh, if, if that's found. Um, we also, through RISE, have an uh, underage gambling prevention program where they go to the schools and speak to students about um, the ills of underage gambling and reveal to them why they need to wait until they are an adult uh, before they participate in this activity. And in fact, currently, we've been participating in a uh, program with a community organization um, to do virtual talks at some of the school to some of the students of schools, especially for boys schools. Um, so for the past four weeks, we've actually been engaging with grade, uh, grade, what is it? Sunday? Grade nine, 10 and 11 students at, very, at schools across the island. Um, and talking to them about this, this program is called Mentor, and it really is about um, uh, men being role models for boys, and they have incorporated a segment on uh, underage gambling uh, prevention as a message. All right, so the work is going, the work continues to ensure that the gaming um, industry occurs or is, you know, people participate in it in a organized and lawful, most importantly, lawful manner in a way that is so that we don't have all kind of offenses and so on. So it sounds to me that you guys are taking the job very seriously and working actively to ensure that um, our sector runs smoothly and orderly and lawfully and, and all those different adjectives. That and, responsive and, and consumers can be responsible in their engagement with the gambling industry. Certainly, yes. All right. So... Um, not a question. I guess yeah, it, it will come back to me. It will come back to me. But I think we're approaching our time limit. So what I'll do here is just once again, because repetition is the key to learning. Maurice, once again, just go back through the renewal process for persons who are interested, persons who have their machines, and what do they need to do so that they can renew their gaming license on time and avoid any other penalties and other problems that come with it. So again, the, it's a COVID restriction time. The commission is not doing any face-to-face -face, um, facilitation of licensing. So persons are instructed to go to the commission's website, um, download and complete the application form, pay the government um, portion of the, of the, of the fees to, to tax administration Jamaica, pay the commission um, portion of the fee either through Scotia Bank online or through Bill Express, which is a new option being given to, 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 to customers for, um, for the first time this year. Use either use a drop box so they can come by, use a drop box and leave their application or they can use a courier and send their application in. So that's the that's the process as to for the for the um to avoid you know any crowding and so on in COVID um, pandemic. All right. It sounds easy as one, two, three. Download the form, complete the form, make the necessary payments, submit the application with the necessary paperwork to the to the BGLC. How soon does one wait or how long does one wait to get the renewal or get your renewal or your new license or and so on? All, All right. right. So two two things on. As long as your your application is in the system, 
Um, as Jeanette said, the enforcement division of us, we, we coordinate. So your machine won't be seized as long as you're in the system. Um, it probably can take any, depends on how, how the time in terms of the, how much comes in during the time, can it run two weeks to, to two to four weeks to get your license prepared. Wow. But the key thing is that as long as it's in, as long as we, it's logged in the commission, you're, you're, you're good to go. You'll be good to go. Yes. All right, so I think we're going to bring things down, but I have one last ball to bowl down the wicket to both of you, and I think this is from a more macro perspective. I want to ask you guys. I'm a investor from somewhere, you know, from some, you know, some. I've you know come into some. I've done a lot of business deals, and I'm thinking, you know what? I think I want to invest in the gaming sector. It looks promising. It looks good. Or you know, people are saying it looks good. What is your pitch to me, Mr. Van Davis, to come and say, you know what? I should listen to what the BGLC is saying and start to create some kind of gaming business or, you know, something like that. So just to think from the perspective of how is the sector doing? How is it looking? And then, you know, how is it, uh, is it a good, you know, what's your picture of me to come and say, all right, let me go and organize some kind of business in this sector. Um, well, well, um, first thing, as I spoke to the, the gaming industry, unlike even during the pandemic, we have seen unprecedented growth in almost all the sectors, probably except the gaming launch because gaming launch because of the restrictions in terms of the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look also globally, um, gambling is one of those things that even during a recession will keep its head above the water. In terms of the Jamaican marketplace, um, I can easily say that in terms of the English speaking Caribbean, we're among the best reg among the best regulated market in Jamaica. Um, mm -hmm. So where best regulation needs growth, I don't think you need any more selling points than that. All right. So you see, it sounds, it sounds like you're, that's what I'm saying. That's what I want to hear. I want you guys to let persons know yeah, what the sector is doing um, and not just this, you know what I mean? Because person may have a tendency to just think, oh, a gaming sector, whatever. But it, I'm sure it's much more detailed than that. And I'm sure that the, the reason it continues to grow is one, because of good oversight and good because it's performing well. The players are satisfied and the players continue to invest. So we just wanted you guys to let persons assure them that, you know what, the gaming sector is, is, is doing well for itself in 2021 in Jamaica. Am I right? Excellent. It's doing excellent. It's, it, it, has, it has grown in the last five years. It has continued to grow. And in terms of our regulation, we have ensured it, is grow, it has grown in a responsible uh, manner. All right. I think uh, we've covered most, if not everything. And if not, we're going to just have you in studio again so we can talk, um, talk more about the different work that you guys do. And it's always great to have you here. I mean, persons might not necessarily, because I think persons just dismiss gaming as a surface level thing, but I'm sure there's so many moving parts and so much that goes into it. So we have to give you guys some kudos for the work that you're doing because it really does seem to be growing in an orderly and responsible fashion. So kudos to you. You can bring that to all the staff and, and other persons who are working at the BGLC. We really appreciate the, the work that you're doing at this time, all right? Thank you very much. Thank you, Vaughn. All right, so with that said, it's time for us to wrap. Thanks to everyone who tuned into our discussion, especially those of you who sent in your comments. We really do appreciate that. Thank you very much. And if you have a question and you would like it to get, you would like to have it answered, not to worry, you can send it in, in the comments and we'll go through afterwards. And if necessary, you can get in touch with Jeanette or with Maurice and make sure that we get the right information for you too, so that you can proceed, you know what I mean? And remember, our audience plays a major part in our show. So if there's anyone in particular you'd like us to have in studio, let us know. We'll try to have that person in studio as soon as possible. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Information Service. And while you're at it, you can check out the BGLC too. That's the Betting, Gaming, and Lotteries Commission on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of them, they're everywhere. So you can just follow them and get all the information you need about the sector and what work, work that they're doing and so on and so forth. All right, we do this every week live on Facebook. I've been your host, Vaughn Davis, and this has been Studio 58A Live. Thank you very much for joining us, and please have a wonderful day. Take care. Thank you.